So, I've been seeing a few videos floating around on this thing we call the World Wide Web, and it's got me thinking. Are cozy games dead? Has the cozy game trend finally died down a bit? I've got some thoughts about this. Cozy games are those games that make you want to cuddle up on your couch or bed with a warm blanket and a nice cup of tea or a bowl of soup. Turn your twinkly lights on and get your pet to lie down next to you so you can spend numerous hours engrossed with your game. Seriously though, this is pretty much how Nintendo defines it too. If that definition is not enough, here's another way to put it. Some games involve loud noises, intense competitions, and cutthroat leaderboards. Cozy games are the opposite. There is not much action, fighting, or stress. They're typically soothing, with pleasing aesthetics featuring often cute characters in a friendly setting. These games evoke feelings of warmth, comfort, and peace. And contrary to what social media has been leading you to believe, they've been around for a while now. Perhaps a bit of a timeline of the genre could help put things into perspective. A brief oh, history, history of cozy, cozy games. games. One could argue that the first cozy game was Harvest Moon in 1996, since it's probably one of the most well-known older cozy games. I don't doubt that there are even older games that could be considered cozy or somewhat cozy. Harvest Moon just is the one that's more widely known. One could also argue that it was the first to popularize the farming simulation game genre, which has blown up in recent years. Essentially, the main character inherits a farm from his granddad, and now you gotta fix up and turn a profit. You do this by watering and harvesting your crops and taking care of your livestock. You can also get married and have up to two babies. The player's farm is evaluated in the middle of the third year with numerous factors to determine their success or failure. Then, a game you might know, The Sims, was released in 2000. Sims was a big step in life simulation games. Players could live out various lives in whatever way they wanted. They could build to their heart's desire, create different sims, and live out their lives by forming relationships and families, going to work, doing hobbies, and more. It was silly at times, could get serious, and overall a great first step for The Sims franchise and life simulation in general. By March 22nd, 2002, The Sims had sold over 6.3 million copies worldwide and was the best-selling PC game in history at that time. By February of 2005, the game had shipped 16 million copies worldwide. Next, the first Animal Crossing was released in 2001. This was another big hit. This cute and easy to understand franchise has become synonymous with cozy games. Since 2001, Animal Crossing released hit after hit, ignoring this one, until it peaked in the 2020s. More on that in a bit. In Animal Crossing, your character moves to a rural village surrounded by adorable villagers. The gameplay is completely open-ended with no real objective or end-game goal. You can collect items, plant, catch insects, and fish, socialize with villagers, and decorate your house and the village. The Animal Crossing series has been both critically and commercially successful. As a matter of fact, the first four main series games are among the best-selling video games for their respective consoles. After those two Nintendo and EA hits, I would say the next big cozy game came unexpectedly from an indie game developer, Notch. Minecraft was originally released in 2009 and then officially released in 2011. Minecraft is a simple game. It's set in a blocky, pixelated, infinite world where players can mine resources and craft tools or items to build structures, machines, and much more. In survival mode, players fight hostile mobs as well as other players if they want to. However, if you prefer for a more cozy experience, you have the option to set the difficulty to peaceful. Huh? This essentially removes the need for combat from the game and preserves the other mechanics of survival mode. In creative mode, there aren't any hostile mobs and you can freely fly around and create whatever you want since you have access to all the resources in the game. This was a big deal since this widely beloved game started out as an indie game. Ever since the beginning, it was well loved. I know from a personal standpoint that my younger brother was deep in the Minecraft trenches starting in about 2010, and so was my husband. It took me a little bit longer to get into it, but I can confidently say now that I've wasted way too much time in that game. In fact, Minecraft has become the best selling video game in history, with over 3 million copies sold and nearly 140 million monthly active players as of 2023, further legitimizing cozy games as a genre to the gaming industry. Then in 2016, another indie game called Stardew Valley was released. Stardew was created by a single developer known online as Concerned Ape. 
Concerned Ape created everything in the game, including things like the soundtrack and sound effects. This game has grown in popularity to the point that it's a well-known mainstream game. Stardew Valley took the concept of Harvest Moon, but added elements that weren't there to begin with or were lacking. Sure, it is a farming sim at its core, but there's also mining, romancing oh. villagers, forging, fishing, combat, crafting, and cooking. You might be thinking, hey, catchy. Harvest Moon had most of that stuff too. And you'd be correct. The main difference was that Concerned Ape took those ideas and deepened them. There's more depth to it all. As I said, Stardew includes combat, crafting, and quests. You can choose to complete the Community Center or Joja Mart bundles. Completing these bundles unlocked previously restricted areas and game mechanics. Within the first two months after release, Stardew sold over a million copies. By May of 2022, it sold over 20 million copies across all platforms with 13 million on PC. When I reflect on the success of Animal Crossing New Horizons, I can't help but think that it was released right at the perfect time. Don't get me wrong, I think it would have been successful either way. However, I'm not ignoring the fact that it was released right at the beginning of the 2020 pandemic. It was released days after my province, Ontario, went into lockdown. March 20th, 2020, the pandemic got us all locked inside, working from home and longing for better days. There was a reason why the cottage core aesthetic, sourdough starters, and dedicated self-care and mindfulness became widely popular. We all wanted to go live in a cottage, hidden away in a forest, and care for our gardens, ducks, or chickens, and simply exist in that perfect fantasy. Animal Crossing is just that. Your character exists on a new island, brimming with beautiful plants and landscapes. You build a town there and become friends with happy-go-lucky villagers. It was the thing everyone longed for in real life. I also feel like this was around the time that cozy games really took off on social media, probably due to the fact that everyone was spending way more time on social media. As access to video games have become more widely accessible, there have been more people interested in them. This means more people interested in cozy games or ones that aren't the typical shooter, adventure, action, or fighting games. Those examples I just talked about are simply the most popular mainstream cozy games, but many, 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 many more exist. Some of them come from big corporations and many of them from indie developers. It is good to note that despite those games and franchises being several years old, they're still being religiously played even nowadays. They're games that have stood the test of time, and there are several reasons for that. Cozy games are approachable and inclusive. It's much easier to get into since they don't include intense skill testing elements or complex gameplay mechanics. Plus, they're way less stressful than other video game genres. Instead, these games focus on creating positive player experiences. This means these games are a great way to de-stress after a long day at work or school. For all of those reasons, I strongly believe that cozy games will never die. Sure, some might come and go, but the genre is thriving. Even more so, there's a strong appetite for cozy games. It's a huge deal. With that being said, not all cozy games are created equally. Could cozy games be better? Some players might agree, and others disagree. Even my husband and I have differing opinions on this depending on what cozy game we're talking about. Something like Eco, Jordan absolutely thinks is near perfection. Animal Crossing, Velheim, Dinkum, he could sink hours into playing those games without any frustration at the game. Farm Sims are his jam. For me, those games are good. Nevertheless, they need something more to hold my interest for long periods. I need more risk and reward. You see, I'm a collector and a completer, a go-getter. I like to finish all achievements, all puzzles, everything. I like to see my numbers get bigger, pictures being completed, a collection of titles or achievements or whatever they're called in that game. Not saying Jordan isn't because he's 100% all of those things as well. I think the main difference for us would be that I love me some risk. No. I need more risk. Risk being in-game death, loss of whatever, or to a lesser extent, time wasted on the objective. I thrive off of that risk and it makes the reward feel that much better. I get that cozy games are supposed to be something to unwind to. There has to be a middle ground between no progression or slow progression, no risk and reward, and the coziness the game offers, right? right? I think the most ideal game to relax and play after a stressful day is something like Enshrouded. You fight things, you can die and lose items, and you can create buildings, farm, and explore. It's the perfect mix. To get to my point, I think the best cozy games are ones that are often teetering between the cozy label and something else. 
either way, if you love cozy or somewhat cozy games and want to see more innovative games come out, what can you do? Support innovative, passionate, indie developers. Seek out games that are created by smaller teams that have passion for the game they're creating. This, this is where, is the, where magic the magic happens. happens. Why is that? Well, let's be honest here. Indie game developers aren't making big bucks. They're not creating a game that will instantly become well known because of the popular company they're working for, or because they have a marketing team that they can sink tons of money into. The games they're making are labors of love. Most of the time. These games tend to introduce new and creative elements into the games. Most of the time. A great example of this would be the character creator for Paralives. Paralives is a life sim, similar to The Sims, yet the way to create and develop your characters over time are two completely different experiences. As someone who enjoys life sims, this will finally be a new and different experience to what I'm used to, which is whatever The Sims has. We see typically big companies utilizing the word cozy so that the game can have minimum or half-baked gameplay. Sometimes it feels like a lot of cozy games are forever stuck in the early access mode and never evolve out of that state. It might also feel like the cozy game market has become saturated with games that somehow get popular due to the coziness of it, not because they're decent games. I think a great example of this would be all of the farm sims that are essentially copies of each other. There's nothing new or innovative about any of them. They're all soulless cash grabs. There's a big difference in gameplay when the game is trying to reproduce or imitate the coziness of another game versus a cozy game that was developed because of the game developer's passion for their game. Long story short, cozy games aren't dead. They're just another thing in life that's being milked and overproduced by soulless big corporations simply because a few great ones became very popular. This is why it's so important to support smaller indie game developers who are clearly passionate about their game. Games that are innovative. If you watched all the way through, please let me know what your favorite cozy game is. What are you currently playing? If you're looking for something else to watch and you're a Sims 4 fan, I have a cool video where I took a look back at The Sims busting out on my Steam Deck, so if you're interested, please watch that. Thank you for watching, keep being awesome, and stay happy, healthy, and hydrated. Bye!